स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी एंड वट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ओरिजिन ऑफ लाइफ ऑन द अर्थ एंड इन दस कंटेक्स वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस थ्योरीज वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस हाउ वट वॉज द कंडीशन ऑफ द अर्थ सो दैट इट वॉज पॉसिबल टू हैव द लाइफ ऑन द अर्थ वी हैव डिस्कस दैट वट आज द Uh, structure of the earth and so on so in the previous lecture we have emphasized most on more on the conditions and the uh, you know the uh, the way in which the uh, life was originated on to the earth and uh, in that context we have discussed uh, many types of uh, theories we have discussed about the theory of spontaneous generation we have discussed about the theory of special creations then we have discussed about the theory of uh, the abiogenesis and so on by discussing those theories we have discussed uh, we have understood that these theories were mostly been based on the different types of experimental uh, different uh, you know they were different different types of assumptions so they were not based on the experiments they were only based on the assumptions for example in the theory of special creations the this is a completely a religious theory where the people have discovered or people have believe that god is the creator of the earth and the different types of organisms and the different religions have their own way of explaining this particular phenomena and then uh, we have discussed about the theory of spontaneous generations where the people have said that the non living matter give rise to the different types of organisms and then uh, subsequently so there there were three, six major theories what we have said in the previous lecture that we are been proposed out of these uh, uh, six theories the five theories were discussed in our previous lectures and all these theories were mostly been uh, based on the assumption as well as without performing the much of the conclusive experiments so now in today's lecture we are going to start discussing about the modern theory or the chemical theory of uh, the origin of life and that explains that the, how the different chemical molecules give rise to the generation of the organisms and this theory is apart from the earlier five theories this theory was completely been dependent on or dependent on the different types of experiment which are been performed and it is based on the scientific evidences so let's start discussing about the modern theory or the chemical theory of the origin of life so what we have discussed we have discussed about the uh the five different theories we have discussed about the theory of special creations we have discussed about the theory of spontaneous generations we discussed about the theory of catabolisms we discussed about the theory of cosmozoics and the discussed about the theory of eternity of life now in today's lecture we discuss about the modern theory so what is the modern theory the modern theory which is also known as the chemical theory or the theory of the primary abiogenesis so modern theory uh, is very much linked to the theory of abiogenesis except with the condition that what they have said is that the uh, the, the it is not possible to have the uh, life on the earth under the current earth conditions so we have to create the conditions what was present on the primitive earth so i if you recall in the previous lecture we discuss about what was the primitive 
what was the condition on the primitive earth right the condition on the primitive earth was that it was reducing in nature because there was no molecular oxygen was present and it was mostly the hydrogen and the hydrogen compound right whether it is the water or uh, or the hydrogen or the methane or the ammonia all these molecules were I, the nitrogen der uh, hydrogen derivatives so these molecules were making the environment more uh, reducing and we have discussed in the previous lecture as well that why the reducing environment is good and what was supporting the origin of the life although the life cannot continue without the oxygen because it depends on the various processes which requires the energy and that energy is being released only by the uh, by the oxidation process but earlier in the primitive uh, earth conditions there was no dearth of ox uh, energy because the energy they were getting the energy from the solar energy they were getting the energy through the uh, the uh, you know the volcanic eruptions they were getting the energy through the uh, lightning and all other kinds of sources they were getting the energy even from the radioactive decays and so on so the conditions in the primitive earth was uh, the condition on the primitive earth is different from the present condition and which do not permit the abiogenesis. So the people were trying to do the abiogenesis. If you recall the cl exp classical experiments which are done by the Reddies or Spelogeny or even the Louis Pasteur, they have disproved the theory of abiogenesis simply because the current condition of the earth is not supporting the life. It is not supporting the origin of the life. It is only supporting the life activities because it is supporting the generation of the energy. But it does not permit the abiogenesis. The idea of the chemical theory uh, was put forward by the two scientists, A.I. Orfarin and the J.B.S. Haldin. And it has made the following assumptions. What are these assumptions? The spontaneous generation of life under the present environment is not possible. And that's why they have, they, that, that is the, that's a, that is the reason that the abiogenesis theory was disproved or which was discarded because of the classical experiments were done by the Reddy and Spallagnini or the Louis Pasteur's. And the earth is part atmosphere approximately 1 billion year is very different from the current condition. So the earth atmosphere what was there approximately at the 1 billion year is very different because current condition is more oxidizing right whereas at the time of the 1 billion year when the earth you know, formed it was mostly be reducing right. So it has more of the hydrogen and the hydrogen related molecules. The primitive earth atmosphere was reducing in nature and that was very very important and uh, under these conditions the chemical molecules like the inorganic molecules like inorganic molecules like the water, uh, ammonia or the uh, methane they were reacting with each other and uh, through a series of reaction to form the organic substances and the other complex biomolecule. The solar energy and the UV radiation provide the, the energy for the chemical reactions. Now, when these two great scientists have proposed the modern theory of the uh, origin or the chemical theory of uh, life origin, uh, they were also so, so scientists have said, okay, this is fine, but now what kind how you say that this is actually be the case right so you have to perform the conclusive experiment you have to show me that this is actually be the true then for that experiment for that reason the scientists have started doing the experiment to prove or to the disprove the modern theory so the first scientist who did the experimental evidences to prove the theory of modern theory uh, that uh, because you know initially the hypothesis which was proposed by the Haldane did not get much scientific attention or the support because there was no experiment which are being done by the scientists. And then the uh, to conclusively support the chemical theory the Stanley Miller and the Ure conducted the experiment mimicking the primitive earth conditions. So how they have done that they have actually developed a scientific experimental setup which contains uh, which contains a glass flask a condenser and a liquid flask 
and which are interconnected with a tube with the source of electric spark to provide the energy. So, what they have done is they have taken a, a, a experimental setup and where they have having the you know the glass flask and they will be connected to uh, uh, the liquid flask right. So, this is a liquid flask right where the boil, water can be boiled and then they have also have the glass flask where they are actually been able to produce the electric spark and that electric spark is actually mimicking the lightning and that is how they are actually been providing the energy. And then they can actually be able to uh, allow the entry of the different types of gases into this. So, what they have done is they have taken the methane, ammonia and hydrogen as a gas into this chamber and then they were having the condenser. So, that condenser is actually going to cool down these gases. So, they will be present in the liquidified form and or, or the substances whatever is going to be formed. So, then what they have done, they have taken this uh, uh, apparatus and then he introduced a mixture of methane, ammonia and hydrogen in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1 and the water and uh, water vapor at a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. If you recall when we were discussing about the earth formation, we said that earth is uh, being formed when the temperature was approximately around 1000 degrees Celsius. So, they, they have maintained the similar kind of primitive earth conditions like 800 uh, degrees Celsius. They have uh, mixed the, uh, they have made the environment reducing by introducing these, uh, you know, uh, hydrogen in the environment as well as ammonia and methane. So, there was no oxygen. So, no oxygen in the their apparatus. Then they have what they have done, they have actually circulated this uh, mixture into this apparatus. So, this is a closed apparatus, right? There is no way you can actually get uh, it can go out, right? So, if because outside, outside is oxygen, right? So, if oxygen is will enter it will actually going to destroy the chemical reaction and that is why they will not be, there will be no generation of the organic molecules. Then they allowed the cir to circulate the mixture into this closed glass apparatus for 18 days continuously. So, they have allowed this to be circulated. So, the uh, see the they have heated the water right. So, water is going this way right. And while it is going, it is also taking the different gases, right, different gases into this mixture and then these gases are entering into this bulb, right. And in, once they enter into the bulb, they are actually putting the electric shock. So, because of that, there will be electric spark and that actually mimics the, uh, the, in the lightning, right. And that is how it is actually providing the heat or the energy into the system. So, because of this energy, these gases are actually going to react with each other and then they were actually going to be form the new compound and that is how they will be get cooled down by a condenser. So, they will be form the liquid and then these gases are actually going to, you know, the condense, the liquid is going to be condensed in this particular trap and after that, the gases will again enter into the this water. And once they enter into this water, they are actually going to come out in the form of a like a kind of a volcanic eruptions or something, right? So, they will come out from this water and again they will travel. So, this, this continued for 18 days and uh, in, during these 18 days, they have taken out the sample. So, they have a sample port, what you see here, right? They have sample port. So, whatever the liquid condense here, they can be able to take out the sample and then they, that sample can be tested for the synthesis of the new compound or not. So, they provided the energy in the form of spark by supplying electricity at the 75,000 volt to the two electrodes, the electric sparks mimicking the lightning what is happening in the primitive earth atmosphere. While passing the mixture, gases were passed through a liquid flask to stimulate the volcano. The mixture was collected from the stockcock and analyzed using the chromatography as well as the calorimetric technique. So, chromatography is, is a technique is a, is a, is or the calorimetry is a technique. So, calorimetry is actually going to tell you what will be the uh, energy level or what was the, you know, the free energy change of these compounds what are being formed, whereas the chromatography is actually going to tell you the nature of that particular compound, whether, uh, you know, the glucose is being formed or whether the sugars are being formed or whether the organic molecules are being formed or not. So, chromatography is 
the separation technique which actually not only going to separate the molecule but it also going to tell you the nature of that particular compound it the chromatography is can be also be used to uh, you know the to purify or to uh, characterize the molecules the analysis of the mixture indicate that the presence of amino acids such as glycine alanine aspartic acid nitrogenous base like adenine are being formed into these particular experiments so and uh, so they, this this proves that you can be able to you know by doing this experiment you can be able to synthesize the new compounds so the mixture uh, what they have collected from the stock cock analyzed using chromatography and calorimetric method the mixture of this indicate the presence of amino acids such as the glycine alanine aspartic acid and nitrogenous bases such as adenine and the simple sugar ribose so you know that the adenine and uh, plus sugar is actually can give you the simple uh, molecule which is called dna or nucleotide so these two molecules can actually will be able to give you the dna as well as the rna whereas all these molecules like glycine alanine aspartic acid and are probably will be good to give you the proteins uh, so that's how they have proved that by doing this simple experiment and where they have not done the experiment for a very extensive period like uh, you know 18 days is a very small period uh, but to to see that the protein are formed or not right so 18 days is good enough to say that by doing this method they could you can be able to synthesize the biomolecule so once you synthesize the biomolecule they can be able to give rise to life so the chemical molecules the chemical reaction which explains the synthesis of these compound are as follows the formation of the uh, the uh, the uh, small simpler uh, uh, organic molecule like the formaldehyde or the hcn so the carbon dioxide uh, is actually going to be dissociated into the carbon monoxide and molecular oxygen and then the methane is actually going to react with these two compound to give you the hcho right this is the formaldehyde and then the water is going to be released similarly the carbon monoxide which is going to be react with ammonia is actually going to give you the hcn and if the methane is also going to react with the uh, ammonia it also can give you the hcn similarly you can also explain the formation of the glycine the formaldehyde ammonia and hcn then react to form the glycine so this is the it's uh, formaldehyde then it reacts with hcn and then it reacts with the ammonia and that's how it is actually going to give rise to the glycine and then this nh2 ch2 cn is actually going to be react with water and that's how you are actually going to have a molecule of ammonia and you are also going to have the molecule of glycine so this glycine the degeneration of glycine and the designation of the other biomolecule proved the for the first time that it is possible to have the synthesis of the biomolecule by the inorganic molecules before that it was not possible right so because uh, the condition in which the people were trying to prove the abiogenesis was not you know conclusive like for example uh, Uh, if you, even if you take the rotten meat it will not give rise to the you know the molecules so this this uh, the cl this classical experiment of stanley miller uh, actually proved that the uh, modern theory of uh, modern theory or the chemical theory is uh, correct and it actually can be able to give us the insight how the life is originated onto the earth then they uh, move ahead and they have actually given the detail what are the different steps could have happened by you know synthesis of these biomolecules and then how these biomolecules could have given rise to the uh, primitive cell and that primitive cell could have been evolved into a more and more complex uh, organisms so according to the chemical theory so the what is the proposed events right so nobody knows how the life is originated on to earth so but these scientists based on these experiments they have proposed the multiple events so what you have is you have the four major steps what they have proposed so according 
to the chemical theory of origin of life, a series of chemical synthesis give rise to the life, right? You have seen how we, the carbon dioxide and ammonia and the methane is actually reacting to give rise to the formaldehyde and then formaldehyde is reacting with these molecules to give rise to the glycine. So, synthesis of glycine, glycine is the simplest amino acid, but then once the glycine is formed, you can also have the multiple different combinations and that is how you can be able to have the synthesis of the even complex biomolecules. So, considering these, these scientists have proposed the events which probably could have happened in the primitive earth environment and that is how they have said that it is a four major step process. What is the step one? Step one is the formation of inorganic molecule. The high temperature of the primitive earth did not allow the condensation of the atom to form the inorganic molecule. As the temperature of earth goes down, the condensation of the different atom molecule give rise to the simpler molecule. For example, in the primitive earth, you have the hydrogen, you were having the carbon, you have nitrogen and oxygen. But when the temperature goes down, these molecules were coming together and that is how they have synthesized the simpler inorganic molecule like ammonia or the acetic acid. So, you can see that the oxygen uh, which was you know molecular oxygen which was associated with this molecule and that is how it has given the two simpler molecules which are ammonia and uh, ammonia acid right. Apart from that you can also have the uh, methane and the elements the most abundant element was the, are the hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and carbon. The reaction of these molecules give rise to the different gases such as hydrogen, nitrogen, ammonia, methane, carbon dioxide and water vapor. So, uh, you were because these elements were present, you can have the different types of gases. You can have the nitrogen, you can, you can have hydrogen, you can have nitrogen, you can have the ammonia right you can have the ammonia you can have the carbon dioxide and you can have the water and water because the temperature is high it is always going to be present in the form of vapor so water is actually uh, going to react with uh, will be a made will be a medium through which these different gases are actually going to react with each other the energy of these reactions was proved or uh, was provided by the sunlight, lightning or the volcanic eruption. Because you know if you want to do a chemical synthesis, you have to form the bond, right. For example, you have two carbon molecules, then if they will not form the bond, right, they will compound, they are supposed to form a bond, right. So they are supposed to form a bond like whether it is a single bond, double bond or triple bond. This bond formation is a requires the energy. So, that energy is going to be supplied externally and that is being supplied by the sunlight, lightning or the volcanic eruptions. So, in step 1 you are going to have the formation of inorganic molecules like inorganic molecule whether they are the gases or the liquids. Then in the step 2 you are going to have the spontaneous formation of the monomeric organic compound. The simple molecules interact with each other to form the simpler monomeric organic compounds. These, so, you can imagine that you have the primitive ocean, right, primitive ocean where you have all sort of gases like methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nit uh, nitric oxide and all those kind of molecules. So, when they will, and then you have the lightning, right, and you also have the UV light from the sun and all these are when they are doing they are actually forming the simpler monomeric compounds like fat, proteins, nucleic acids, primitive or you know water and the polysaccharides. So, these molecules are like sugar, fatty acid, glycerol, amino acids and the organic bases like the organic bases which are purine or the pyrimidine. The reactions between the inorganic to give simpler organic compound occur in the reducing environment inside the ocean. The inorganic molecules were condensed in the form of rain as a temperature of earth goes down. Hence, both inorganic compound and the simpler organic compound were present in the primordial ocean, which means 
uh, once the temperature goes down the water was condensing right so there was a rain right and because of the rain all these molecule what are present in the atmosphere are condensing and getting dissolved into the molecular ocean and that's how they were getting a medium in which all these molecules are reacting with each other so energy they are getting from the lighting as well as the sunlight and that's how they are forming the simpler sh sugars they were forming the simple fats and simple uh, nucleic acid molecules like the nucleotides and all these molecules are present in the uh, primordial oceans then in the step 3 the spontaneous formation of the complex organic molecules so since once you have generated the simpler organic molecules these, these simpler organic molecules are actually going to react with each other so what we have generated we have generated the simpler carbohydrate like simpler sugars and these simpler sugars are then actually going to form the more and more complex sugars so the sim small simpler organic compounds react to form the complex organic compound the simpler organic uh, simple amino acid reacts to form the polypeptides sugar reacts to form the large sugar molecules fatty acid and glycerols combine together to give you the fat and the heat of the sun is utilized for providing energy for these reactions so you what we have is we have the simplest uh, organic molecules they will react with each other to give the smaller more complex like molecules like the glycerin ribose glucose and on even more larger molecules so fat is also being developed once you have the glycerol and the fatty acids the glycerol and fatty acids are actually going to combine to give you the fat and uh, you know that the fat is a very important component of the plasma membrane right so that is actually going to give rise to the plasma membrane uh, of the primitive cell so that we are going to discuss so in the step 3 you are going to have the synthesis of the complex organic compounds then in the step 4 you are going to see the generation of the smaller molecular see once you have generated the small molecules they are actually not going to have the tendency to club together because they can have the but once you generated a bigger biomolecules like the proteins or the nucleic acids they will be actually going to react with each other and that's how they will be actually going to form the complex right so they will be going to form a complex and these complexes are known as the coiservates right so they will be formed as they will be uh, called as the coiservates and uh, you can see right so all these molecules so where you can probably there will be a protein which is actually going to form a, you know outside layer and then within this you can have the DNA or lipids and all those kind of things and that's how you are actually going to have a ball shape coiservates where the molecules are going to come together and they will form the colloidal aggregates which are called as the coiservates. A layer of water molecule forms around the protein molecules present in the coiservate. So once the protein molecules are there and you know that uh, and even if we are going to discuss in future that protein molecules are actually being made up of, of the amino acids and amino acids are going to attract the water. So what will happen is the water molecule is actually going to you know absorb onto these molecules and that's how you have a coiservate and apart from the coiservate outside the coiservate you are going to have the plasma you know the layer of water and because of this this small area is actually going to be turned into a very you know concentrate so it will actually going to concentrate the reactants and that's how it is actually going to facilitate the chemical reaction at a faster rate you know that the chemical reactions are dependent on the concentration of the molecules right so if a is getting converted into b if you have the 10 milligrams of A, it is actually going to be from the 10 milligrams of B, right? But if you increase the amount, right? If you increase the, even if you keep the 10 milligrams and the concentration is 0.5 milligrams per ml, the reactions are actually going to give you the, react, the reactants in the range, in the same ratio. But if you take the 10 milligrams and can make, make the concentration as 10 milligram per ml, then in a given time what you are going to get you are going to get the 10 milligrams of the B right. So rate of reaction is always been dependent on the concentration of the reactants right and you can increase the rate of reaction simply by having a protein 
uh, you know protein which is going to cover these coservates and uh, along uh, apart from the uh, proteins you can also have the water molecules so that's why it is actually going to form a small vessel like structure and because of this the lower local concentration of the molecules are going to go up so the membrane which is present around the molecule protect the molecule right so first of all it is going to protect so it will going to be not going to be damaged it is not going to disintegrate so this is actually going to form the colloidal particles which are actually not going to you know dislodged and at the same time it is actually going to bring the high concentration of the reactants to enhance the chemical reaction so you can see I mean, we were talking about the previous lecture it is it took uh, you know couple of billion years for these reactions to complete uh, so that you can be able to have the synthesis of these biomolecules but if you increase the reaction concentration the, the the chemical reaction are going to enhance because remember that there is no enzyme right so there is no enzyme in this so the chemical reaction has to facilitate spontaneously on its own the colloidal aggregates absorb the protein and the other biomolecule from the ocean this results in the growth of coservate as well as the internal complexity as the coservate divides into the multiple small ones so now what happened is these coservates started you know collecting the protein so as an arrangement the protein were present outside and inside this structure they were be trapping the different types of biomolecules like the uh, nucleotides or the DNA and RNA and outside this you are going to have a water layer and that is actually going to form a membrane like structures and ultimately these coservates started you know taking up the molecules from the outside and that's how they will be started growing so they will be started growing in size and once they grow to a larger size then these coservates are breaking from the middle and that's how they will be dividing into the two steps uh, into the multiple coservates and this is what is happening right so you have uh, you know single coservates around this you have the uh, you know the protective membrane right this protective membrane is there and then it actually you know grows in size so if it, if it grows in a, such a big size then it divides and gives the multiple coservates and you can imagine that all these multiple coservates again will do the same right they will grow and then they will be actually going to divide and that's how you are actually going to see large number of coservates uh, into the primordial oceans then we have the uh, you know the two steps okay so step is uh, from the coservates you are actually going to have the development of the uh, protocell or the so for once the coservates started you know um, taking up the biomolecules from the ocean they they have actually uh, started developing the uh, the primitive cells. So, so coservates are the initial species present in the ocean to start the formation of the primary cells. This process is accomplished in the two steps. So step four further been divided into the two steps. In the step one, you have the formation of the protocells. The coservates has the ability to take up the new molecule to replace the degraded molecule and maintain the size. So coservates were the first species which are formed and they were having the ability to you know replace the molecule which are being degraded and that's how they can be able to do the the you know if there is, if there is an injury they can be able to do the repairing of that particular part and thus the coservates has the basic ability of the living system it does not have the complex molecules such as the enzyme the process of the acquiring new molecule was not regulated. Later, nucleic acid is entrapped within the coservates and the process of division becomes precise and controlled. This form of coservate with nucleic acid is known as the protocells. Later on, what happened is the coservates have started trapping the bow molecule. So, initially, the, all the reactions were, you know, very uh, unregulated. So, because of, they were be uh, you know they will be uh, governed simply by the mass balance right so wherever the mass is there and if the mass is going beyond a size it is actually getting weakened and that's how it is actually going to break in break into the multiple portions for example this is what you see right the, this is a coiser weight it was very big but at this point it got you know very high size of the biomolecule so that's how this portion got 
you know constricted and that's how this portion is going to be uh, now form the new coservates so same is happening here also so this coservate is not having any regulation where this could be happening but ultimately these coservates have started taking up the you know the nucleotides or the nucleic acid so once they have started taking the nucleic acid the nucleic acid has you know taken up the because nucleic acid is a having the information so whether it is a nucleic acid of rna uh, or the dna that was having the information and that they have started governing the activities within the coservates and that's how the these coservates which were having the entrapped nucle nucleotides or nucle nucleic acids are known as the eobonts or the protocells so these were the first form of the living living organisms later on these protocells were you know form the first cell so then the protein molecules are and the appearance of enzyme has enhanced the synthesis of several of biomolecules which are present in the protocells the rna and dna developed in these molecule and that has taken over the protein synthesis so initially the protein synthesis was happening because of the spontaneous reactions between the inorganic biomolecules or the smaller biomolecules right because the smaller biomolecules were synthesizing the amino acids and then these amino acids were uh, binding to each other and that's how the proteins are synthesizing but as soon as the rna and dna were trapped within the coservates the rna and dna were guiding what will be the synthesis of the biomolecule although there are many things which are not known between in this uh, in this particular process how the rna and dna were you know Uh, governing the synthesis of the biomolecules or the protein molecules and so on so that these are the some of the things which we we are still not clear the interaction of the lipid and the protein allowed the formation of the biomembrane which has uh, you know which has provided the selectivity in the primitive cell for intake or the exclusion so ultimately what will happen is the people you know the the lipids are uh, forming the aggregates with the proteins and that's how they have formed the bio plasma membrane so now the, there was a plasma membrane outside and then you have the you know the nucleic acids in the middle and that's how it has actually formed the first cell and this first cell was primitive and it was you know still need to be you know develop many things like it has to develop the different types of organelles and so on and that's how the it, this primitive cell could be the prokaryotic in nature and uh, this prokaryotic cell could have given up the eukaryotic cells it allows the appearance of the membrane bound protocell and it has eventually give rise to the first cell on the earth so this is what happened probably could happened and these are the proposed event still there are no experimental evidences to prove these points these are the proposed uh, events which are been uh, you know proposed by the different scientists based on the experimental evidences but not the direct experimental evidences through which the people are you know because we all still know that uh, if you take the protein and lipids and if you mix them or if you provide the energy into the system they actually get rearranged to give you a plasma membrane so these are the you know some of the experiment but the, nobody has so far actually done these steps individually and to you know to create a protocell or to create uh, the you know the first cell the mutation in the dna and the selection of the fast growing give rise to the appearance of the uh, first primordial cell so the, the ultimately there there will could be some mutation in the dna and that's how the so the first cell cellular form was formed on the earth at approximately 2000 million years ago so that's how the uh, the life is originated on to the earth so this is all about the origin of life on the earth if we summarize what we have just discussed what we have discussed we have discussed the multiple events are required to uh, to form the life on the earth and all these are the proposed events based on the uh, results what people got from the stanley millers and the ures experiments so what he it he says is that the proposed events are actually a four step events in the step one you are actually going to have the formation of the inorganic molecules and then in the step 2 you are going to have the spontaneous formation of the simpler monomeric organic compounds so in that you are going to form the monomeric uh, you know amino acids and nucleotides 
as well as the fatty acid and glycerol and once you form the fatty acid glycerol they are actually going to form a club together and they are actually going to form the complex uh, biomolecules or complex structures uh, complex biomolecules in the step 3 and in this in this and in then the uh, these biomolecules will come together they will aggregate and that's how they are actually going to form the coesorbates in the step 4 and once the step 4 the coesorbates are being formed these coesorbates are actually going to start acquiring the biomolecules from the primordial oceans and they will be started growing in size and that's how they will actually uh, you know and apart from that they will also have the ability to replace the biomolecules which are being damaged and once they grow to a certain size then these coesorbates are actually going to divide and they will give you the uh, you know the daughter uh, coesorbates but ultimately these coesorbates have also started develop you know uh, trapping the uh, nucleic acids which are being also present in the primordial oceans and that is how they have formed the first protocells and these protocells once they have you know having the nucleic acids they have also directed the protein synthesis the lipid also came into the picture and the lipid have, along with the protein has formed the plasma membrane and that's how you have the plasma membrane bound first cell which is formed within the primordial oceans so this is all about the origin of life and what we have discussed we have discussed about the different theories uh, in the previous lecture as well as in this lecture and in this lecture we discuss about the modern theory of uh, origin of life and we have also discussed about the different uh, experiments so we have discussed in detail about the Stanimulus experiment and how the Stanimulus experiment prove that the smaller simpler biomolecules uh, similar chemical molecules can give rise to the complex biomolecules one interesting thing which is uh, you know very important is that if people are still trying to you know discover the more and more molecules which the Stanley Miller has actually formed right. So Stanley Miller has collected the different fractions and then these these fractions are still being preserved in his laboratory and uh, recently the, when the scientists have you know uh, analyze those uh, uh, reagent bottles or analyze those uh, fractions what they could found is that because the Stanley Miller does not have the very high end technique in that particular time frame uh, the, he could not be able to identify some of the biomolecules but now if you go and try to you know uh, uh, fractionate those molecules what people have found is that even if the they could be able to see the different types of nucleotides and other kinds of biomolecules which the Tanner Miller could not be able to report at that point. So this is all about the origin of life. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the evolution and how the simple cell which are being formed in the primordial ocean developed into the different types of organisms. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.